Namaste. Welcome to the Festival of Bharat. I am your host, Kamal Madi Shetty. Today, we are joined by Stephen Napji, also known as Sri Nanda Nandana Dasaji. He is a world renowned uh, Vedic and Vaishnava scholar, author, and a direct disciple of Srila AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ji. Over the last five decades, Stephen Ji has studied all of the major Vedic texts and written and produced 50 different publications and over 200 articles on the importance of Vedic culture and Indian history. He now spends time to preserve, purvey the ageless traditions and knowledge of Vedic culture and yoga systems of India. Namaste, Stephen Ji. Welcome to the festival. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you so much, Guruji, for joining us. Uh, if I could begin this conversation, uh, Stephen Ji, uh, asking you about your life journey. Uh, can you please mm. tell how you went from a boy who was born in a Christian family to becoming a Hindu guru? How did all of this happen? Uh, well, it's an interesting journey, for sure. I mean, it. Uh, you might say it started when I was about seven years old, because I remember uh, lying in bed on a Saturday morning, several Saturday mornings, actually, where my parents were sleeping in. And I was just laying there wondering, how did I get here? You know, how did I get here? How did I get into this body? How did I get into this family? How did I get into born into this town or this area? You know, and how is it? How is it that this body, you know, you have to feed it, you have to let it sleep, then you have to take it to the bathroom, you have to do so you have to clothe it. There's so many things you have to do just because you have this material body. And the whole thing just seemed so unnatural to me. I mean, everybody thinks that this is the way to live. But to me, it was like so unnatural. Why did I get this body instead of my neighbor's body? You know, Jack's body. But if I was in Jack's body, that must mean I would get Jack's parents, too. Maybe that wouldn't be such a good idea. You know, so I was, you know, talk about being a weird kid. You know, but this was the kind of things I was talk thinking about. And um, so, it, in other words, it obviously was a carryover from a previous life where I had a particular existence in this, that life. And many people say, you know, if you want to talk about seeing the big picture, many people say that obviously I was a uh, Hindu Indian in my previous existence. Okay. So I'm now coming into this life asking all these questions. And I had no idea about spirituality. I had no idea about reincarnation karma or any of that stuff that was always picked up along the way later on uh, but yet you know i went to church and you know studied the bible or i remember re in the late teenage years i read the bible from cover to cover and uh it took took about a year i mean it's not the easiest thing to sit down and read but uh i still had so many questions so and i didn't know where to go to find the answers i was looking for so i looked at everything i looked at uh Egyptology, for example, uh, Judaism and the mystical books that they had. The, I looked at uh, 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 mysticism from India, uh, Tarot, I Ching, witchcraft, magic, you know, I, mean, I was looking into all these different things to try to find the answers. Then finally, a friend of mine, um, I, was, I was a musician at the time, so we had our avant-garde groups, you know, of discussing different uh, unusual topics. And my friend, he went to Toronto, and I was living here in uh, Michigan, uh, but my friend went to Toronto and met some Hare Krishna devotees on the street. And they gave him a, uh, a, 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 like a little catalog of books. They didn't have so many books back then. And so he brought it back with me, and we we're looking at it, and <clears throat> he was saying, yeah, this book here is kind of like the Indian Bible. And he was pointing at the Bhagavad Gita. So I said, no, that's what I want. I want to get that book because I was interested in finding out all the different perceptions of God and spirituality from the different cultures around the world. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's what I want. This is going to give me the insight into, you know, Vedic culture and Hinduism and, and to see what it has to offer. So when I got it, it was, a you know, the little blue book that uh, Srila Prabhupada had written. And uh, so I read that. And as I was reading it, it was starting to give me the answers I was looking for. Like, what is the soul? The size of the soul, the nature of the soul. 
uh, karma, reincarnation, uh, who and what is God, all these essential questions that I had that I really couldn't find the answers to anywhere else. And believe me, I was looking. So after conducting what I could say is my own uh, comparative religion course, I finally came to Bhagavad Gita. And once I read Bhagavad Gita, uh, then I knew how fallen I was spiritually. But at the same time, I knew what the standard was. And I just felt like I got to have more of this. So then I studied, you know, uh, before I ever went to any temples or anything, I started studying the Upanishads, uh, even the Manu Samhita. I bought at a, uh, you know, metaphysical bookstore, uh, whatever I could get my hands on. And also then I uh, sent for what was the Krishna book from ISKCON. ISKCON, the uh, book distribution center, was in Boston at the time. So I remember I got the uh, Krishna book, and, when I, and it has this beautiful picture of Krishna on the cover of it. And I remember getting it, and I felt so happy when I got that book. It was like, oh, wow, look at this. You know, this is what I want. I want to really want to study this, which I did. And uh, it was like, I, I can only say it was like uh, a reference to a past life that was starting to come back to me. You know, I was starting to pick up where I left off from a previous existence. And then finally in 1972, no, it was 1971, I went to Denver. You know, I went, my friends and my, uh, uh, myself went to Denver. I was looking for, you know, a career in music and this and that. Somehow we ended up in Denver and there was a temple in Denver and we met a devotee on the street. He gave me his card. I went to the temple and started going there on a regular basis. And I loved, and I had just become vegetarian not too long before that. So going to the temple and getting vegetarian food was uh, the epitome of happiness. You know, I was like, this is what I really want you know and so and then i became familiar uh with the the uh temple etiquette you might say uh taking your shoes off you know bowing down things like that but i was also studying very clearly uh the uh, other books that the uh iskan the Hare krishna movement had at the time like uh uh shriya shupanishad was one book that i really liked uh nectar of devotion and some of the others also uh that i liked so I was studying all this stuff and getting information, but I was still very attached to music. So it took me a few more years to become detached from music, so to speak. And I finally joined the ashram in, what was it, 1975. I finally joined the ashram in 1975 and, and got initiated in 1976. That's when I became Sri Nandanandana, and, uh, which basically means the beautiful son of Maharaj Nanda, which is another name of Krishna. And uh, so then it was in, you know, so then I, you get used to doing pujas and, you know, the uh, uh, different ceremonies that are, in, uh, uh, that go on in the temple and learn how to be a priest and everything. Um, get Brahman initiation with the Gayatri mantra. And, uh, <clears throat> but then in 1986, yeah, 1986, I wanted to try writing. I wanted to try writing because Srila Prabhupada had mentioned in some of his instructions that he expected his disciples to write according to their own understanding. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was create a home study course. And so I created a home study course, which had a book, that had, uh, you know, uh, uh, a test that you take. It had tape recordings of different things, songs and stuff. And then at the end, you take a test and you get a certificate uh, or you could just get the book. But most people just wanted the book. And so, okay, that kind of steered me in the direction that, okay, this is where things are going. Not so much a home study course, but just the book. And then uh, I two things happened at that time. Because in order to do that, I created my own publishing company. So I had my own ISBN number and things like that. And I started to get a request from Baker and Taylor, which is a huge distribution company. So they started ordering books from me. I only had one book at the time, The Secret Teachings of the Vedas. That was my first book. Then I came out with another one called The Universal Path to Enlightenment. Uh, and that just got, that was basic, basically it turned into a cottage industry where I started coming out with books every couple of years or sometimes every year. And uh, 
then I got a call from this company and I couldn't figure out what this company was, but it was, you know, I think in the early nineties or something where this company said, uh, do you still have uh, the secret teachings of the Vedas? Yeah. And what is the wholesale price on that? Well, 642 or some, something like that. Cause I had, I was selling it for $15. So there's a certain uh, formula by which you bring the price down 60% in order to sell to wholesalers. And it was a company called Amazon. And I couldn't figure out who these guys were, you know, and, and, I, and I don't even know who called me. I think it was a woman that called me. It could have been Bezos wife from all I know, but you know, and uh, so sure. Yeah. So I sent them books and they called me again and then later on again. And so things started to develop. And then I also started developing more books, you know, things like the Vedic prophecies was one book that I came out with. And then, and then uh, a few others. And then in the year 2000, I came out with a book called proof of Vedic cultures, global existence, right. which showed all the different cultures around the world, which I'd already researched, but now with the background of understanding the Vedic tradition, I could also see, and with the use of other writers, the influence that Vedic culture had in other areas and other cultures and other religions around the world. So I started writing about that. I put it into a book. The thing of it is, I didn't think many people would be interested in that topic. Biggest mistake I ever made in my writing career. And it became, a, a, it was selling quite a bit. And uh, I'd already taken a few trips to India back in 87, 89, 90. Uh, and by the time uh, the year 2000 came out, uh, the book became very much interested by uh, some of the Indian writers at the time, journalists, things like that. I was invited to a what was called a thinker's meet. Uh, and some very important people came to that meeting. And uh, th what they did first was they had a, they ordered a case of that book, Proof of Vedic Culture's Global Existence. So all the people that attended got a copy of that book. And so because they liked that book so much, then the next thinkers meet that they had, they invited me to come to that and participate. And uh, shortly after that, a few months later, I was invited uh, to do a lecture tour in India. And the lecture tour was organized by the RSS and they uh, arranged all the different speaking places and uh, who I was going to stay with and things like that and the transportation, everything was very well organized. And so I started giving lectures. But at the same time, I started to see the different areas and the different ways the Indian culture was being challenged yeah. by outside foreigners or outside religions, things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started thinking that, you know, we need to do more to defend the Vedic tradition and culture Absolutely. so we can perpetuate that through future generations. Mm -hmm. And that's when I came out with the book uh, Crime, Crimes Against India back in, I think it was 2011. And so, so anyway, things gradually developed in that way. I became more and more familiar with the holy sites of India. I became more and more familiar with the traditions within India. Uh, now I've taken up to 24 different trips in India. I've seen every state of India except uh, Mizoram, Meghalaya, and Tripura. Uh, so I've acquired a lot of experience, a lot of insight, and uh, it's been a great, uh, a great adventure, quite honestly. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.